Welcome to another episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored. I'm your host, Dr. Roger Raban, and we have a fantastic episode for you. The episode's about revision rhinoplasty. That's right, redoing your nose after you had it already done. Why would you ever do that? Because you're very unhappy. And unfortunately and sadly, rhinoplasty has an incredibly high revision rate. And as a result, there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people who have had their noses done and unfortunately are unhappy. And therefore they are seeking or looking to fix it. This is a really important topic because fixing noses is really not that simple. And as a matter of fact, is super complicated. So we're gonna dive into every aspect of revision rhinoplasty from what it means, why it happens, what you can expect. And um, it's gonna be a kind of a very intellectual and educational uh, episode. So let's dive in with, as I always do, which is let's do definitions. Let's explain things. So primary nose or primary rhinoplasty versus revision. Primary means it's your first time. You go in, you find a doctor, you, your anatomy, your nose has never been operated on. In general, rhinoplasty is a very difficult procedure in comparison to say liposuction or a breast dog. It's up there because technically, anatomically, it's very challenging. So now you went and had your nose done and you're unhappy and you want to have it fixed. Now you fall under the category of what's called revision rhinoplasty. So if primary rhinoplasty was difficult, well then revision rhinoplasty is in another stratosphere. Therefore, you must be exceptionally careful that if you decide to go down that route, that you identify someone who's truly an expert or truly specializes in noses. As it is, most plastic surgeons don't do rhinoplasty because as I said, it's pretty complicated. Within that group of individuals who do rhinoplasty, many of them don't do revision rhinoplasty. So you're getting a kind of a gist of how challenging it becomes. Um, so why is it so difficult? Like, okay, it's difficult, but why is it more difficult? The reason it's more difficult the second or third time or fourth time is because number one, you develop a tremendous amount of scar tissue in a small area of very delicate anatomical pieces. Imagine the inside of a watch, you open it, everything's there. The second time there's gum in there. Secondly, you're missing things. The previous surgeon removed things, rearranged things. So it's not native, it's not virgin. Things aren't where they ought to be. And lastly, you have a very small margin for correction. In other words, Sometimes the thing you're trying to fix, if you go to fix it, you may overdo it and make things worse. So revision rhinoplasty is definitely not for the faint at heart. Things you need to know. If you're considering a revision rhinoplasty, let's say you had your nose done, you absolutely need to wait at least a year. Let me reiterate that. This is very important. You get your nose done, your decast comes off and you're in massive panic mode. Oh my God, what have I done? naturally, totally makes sense. You want this thing fixed yesterday. So you're gonna freak out and you're gonna to wanna to fix it as quickly as possible. And while that is a natural instinct, it's a horrible idea. And the reason being is that noses swell up a lot more than any other area. And if you go in the middle of that shit storm, in the middle of that hurricane, and you try to fix it, you're almost guaranteed to make things worse. So you have to tolerate the 12 month that's right, 12 months, period, for the swelling to settle so that if you're gonna have a chance at making it better, the surgeon has a good opportunity. So in general, I, who do a lot of noses and then do, does a lot of revisions, I don't more or less ever do third time revisions. That means you had your nose done, now you want it fixed, I'll do it. You had your nose done, someone tried to fix it, now you want me to fix it and or more, I don't do it generally, and the reason being is it's diminishing returns. It's not that I'm a, not a good surgeon or you're not gonna pay enough, it's that the likelihood that we're gonna go into a nose that's been operated on that many times and fix things that are one piece of cement is very unlikely. And I'm not interested in being a hero nor making your situation worse. So I would caution you if you are in the third or fourth revision, it's, it's really, sometimes you just gotta cut your losses. So as a result, when people call to our practice and they want a revision nose, which is the only type of procedure we do this with, we send them a questionnaire. We send them a questionnaire because we don't wanna waste their time, nor my time, 
and drag you in when I know for a fact I can't help you. Again, what is the objective? For you to do better, for you to be better. Sometimes it's just not possible. And therefore we get a questionnaire sent to you and we ask you for photos. We're going to ask you for your op report, that is the surgeon, and what did they do? We're going to ask whether it was open surgery or closed surgery. We're going to ask you if they did your septoplasty at the time. And all these pieces of information are going to let me know if I believe or I feel confident that I can help you. Then of course, naturally you'll come in and we'll do the exam and whatnot. So what goes wrong? What happens to a nose that leads someone to be so dissatisfied that they literally have to go back and revise it? So here are the things that are most commonly go wrong. Number one, patients went in, their breathing was either poor to begin with or fine. They go get their rhinoplasty done cosmetically and their breathing is significantly worse. That is so common. That's going to be caused by either a, one of a few things. One, the septum that was deviated is still deviated or more deviated. Two, they get pinching on their nostrils and when they take a deep breath, they can't breathe. This is called external valve collapse. Or three, and most commonly, the inside valve, internal valve, collapses, and that means that they can't breathe. Sometimes the issue is that they went in to remove a hump, and the doctor removed way too much, and now they're looked super scooped. Another time, they went in to remove a hump, and there's still a hump, or a weird hump, or half a hump. Sometimes they go in, and their nose is fatty and bulbous, and they want it made a little more refined, and now it's pinched or overly skeletonized. Another time, they go in and it's just as big as it was before. And lastly, the nose may be droopy or overturned, which is one way or the other. Actually, there's one more, which is actually the most common, which is the nose is now asymmetric or crooked or just isn't, isn't straight. So those are all and only some of the reasons why people decide that they want to go and get a revision nose job. So the question then is, okay, so the patient comes in and we ask them these questionnaires. They deemed a good candidate. They come into my office and what does it entail? So I'm going to do a thorough exam and I'm going to look at your nose and determine whether or not I feel that the soft tissue, the soft tissue is mobile, meaning I can lift it up and go down and see what I can do. Two, you're looking for something that can be improved. In other words, sometimes patients come in and what they want improved I just can't improve it. It's, it's too small or it's too dramatic and I, there's no real room for improvement. Three, sometimes what they want improved, believe it or not, is best addressed with a liquid rhinoplasty. Now be careful about this. What I'm saying is that sometimes what they want is a little bit of irregularity and using a little bit of filler in the hands of a very skilled rhinoplasty surgeon, you can just camouflage some irregularities and boom, make it go away without having to do surgery. So I think it's really important to go in and get multiple um, evaluations and see what you know uh, different doctors are suggesting to you before you jump in and do things. Now, I don't ever do any more Photoshop. I don't do that with primary noses where I actually have a pretty decent control, let alone a revision surgery. So if you go in and you have a really messed up nose, and you go sit with a doctor and they morph your photo on a computer and oh my God, wow, that looks so good. Oh my God, what would I do if my nose looked like that? You need to get up and walk out the door because there is no way in hell that that's going to happen. That's why it says in the bottom, results may vary. That, that means uh, that's just not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to help you. Now, I'm going to give you the basic gist of primary rhinoplasty and more so revision rhinoplasty. What is it that I do? What are the techniques? So the first thing we're going to do is open up the skin and I always do an open rhinoplasty. So let's get into this. When you want to get inside a nose, whether it's the first time or a revision, you need to enter through somewhere. That's either a closed technique, cut in each nostril, or an open technique, cut in each nostril and one across the base. I prefer the open technique for all my surgeries, but absolutely for a revision because you want to be able to open up the nose and see what the hell you're talking about. Where's the anatomy, where everything is. The second thing I'm going to notice is how thick or how oily or how scarred is the skin. You're going to hope that the scar, the skin isn't too scarred because there isn't really much you can do. You can't go removing scar out of the skin 
because you run the risk of causing necrosis or the skin to die. And then I want to say the bulk, 95% of what we do with revision rhinoplasty is add structure. That's right. You heard it. Add structure. So what does that mean? Most of the things that go wrong with rhinoplasty today is that the previous surgeon was either too aggressive and removed way too much or removed the wrong items. And now your nose is small and collapsed in places it doesn't need to be. So what I do with my primary noses and for sure with my revisions is add structure in places that have collapsed. For example, right here in the top of the nose where it's pinched, if the nostrils are pinched, if the nose is over rotated and you want to bring it back, if the hump is gone and needs to be added. So structure, what the hell are you talking about? Are you going to add plastic? No. Structure comes in the form of cartilage. Therefore, the cartilage that we use to reconstruct your nose, there are a handful of them. The best and by far my favorite cartilage is your septum. Ta-da! So that's why I like when patients come in for their primary nose and I fix their cosmetic and fix their function. That is, I fix the way they look and the way they breathe. And in doing so, I take the septum that is almost always crooked and then recycle the cartilage back in the nose. So now you're coming in for a revision. Notice I asked you on your questionnaire, did you get a septoplasty? Because if that septum is unavailable, which it sometimes is, I need to get cartilage from somewhere else. Where the hell am I going to get the cartilage from? Well, that leaves the ear, not the ear here, but the ear, inner bowl, or the rib. Or I have to take cadaver. I have to borrow it from a cadaver. So we need cartilage or you can't do 90% of revision rhinoplasty because there's something missing and we need structure. So that's really, really, really important. Once you get the nose job done, be prepared. Be prepared because it's going to be a long recovery. If you thought your first nose job was a long recovery, this is going to overshadow that. Let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and then I'm going to tell you what you can expect from the aftermath of a revision rhinoplasty. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to the second half of Plastic Surgery Uncensored. And we've been doing a kind of a deep dive on revision rhinoplasties. Unfortunately, if you're one of those people who had your nose done and you're unhappy with your nose, whether that's immediate and or after many years, you're listening to this and hopefully we're giving you information that's going to be helpful to you. So we've talked about now revising your nose by adding structure into places, adding to the bridge if it's been over scooped. Um, trying to straighten the nose by adding structure to the sides, essentially building you a new nose. It's what we do. And then the question is, now that I've done that, let's talk about the recovery. So normally we tell you that the time it takes for your nose to heal is 12 to 18 months. When you do a revision rhinoplasty, I tell you 18 to 24 months, and I'm not giving you lip service. I mean, 18 to 24 months. Now you don't look horrible. You may look excellent at the beginning, but the swelling will take a long time to go away. You need to take about two weeks off work because you usually have a cast or some tape on your nose for about two weeks. You then go back to exercising right around the six week mark. And at that point, you kind of just go live your life. There isn't anything you could do at that point other than just ride the wave. And the nose wave is as follows. The nose tends to get more and more and more and more swollen up until around six, seven months. And then the slowly, slowly declining swelling that takes upwards of years to go away. How long does a revision rhinoplasty take? Well, it can take anywhere from three to six hours, depending on how complicated it is. I do them always under general anesthesia and I do it in a, obviously a surgery center. Now, how many follow-ups do I need to have? So we see all of our noses revision and or otherwise at one week, two weeks, six weeks in one year, one week, two weeks, six weeks in one year. But we also see you at two years, three years, and five years. Now, why the hell would I see you at two years, three years, five years? If you had a facelift, would I see you five years later? What about if you had your chin augmentation? I never see patients five years later if they're happy. The reason we see nose patients for two, three, and five years is, as I had said to you, the nose stays swollen for a very long time. 
And as a good surgeon who does a lot of rhinoplasty, you know that you can't pat yourself on the back. Wow, I did a great job until you seen the horse come through the finish line. And so a lot of surgeons will see you for a few weeks and then like not see you again. And then unfortunately patients go on to being unhappy and they never come back. So you really want to follow your patients long term. Now let's shift gears to what are the risks. So the risks in general are as follows, but this is now a higher risk. The, the risks of a revision surgery are higher than the risks of a regular rhinoplasty. So bleeding and infections in general are very small and almost never happen. Scars, well, if you had a previous open rhinoplasty, we have to cut that old scar out and close it again. And despite all of your effort, your breathing may be no better than it was. It may be worse than it was. I cannot tell you the number of people I've seen who've had revision rhinoplasty done, and now their breathing is worse than before because as I told you, this is a very delicate house of cards. You can get necrosis of skin. Remember, you're lifting up the skin multiple times and that little edge has to survive. But by and large, the number one risk is irregularities, asymmetry, and contour deformity. What does that mean? I'm gonna repeat it. Irregularities, asymmetries, and contour deformities, which basically means your nose is not perfect. And despite your surgeon's skill, the amount of money you spent, how much homework you did, the issues you have still persist. And if you're lucky, they're better. So if you ever meet a surgeon and they lead you to believe that your revision rhinoplasty results are gonna be a slam dunk or a home run, I assure you they're lying to you. As it is, they should never tell you that for a primary nose, let alone a revision rhinoplasty. What you hope in the best case scenario is the following. You do your homework, hopefully more so than you did the first time. You interview a few plastic surgeons whose work you like. You get a realistic understanding of whether or not you are or aren't a good candidate. You realize what things can and can't be improved. And then when you have surgery, you pray that the majority of the things that you went to improve, you got some percentage improvement such that at the end, while you're not perfect, you're better than you were. And if you are, I highly recommend you bury the hatchet and you don't continue on this path because I have seen many patients in whom I've not operated on seeking improvement of their nose only to find that every time they touch it, it only gets worse. I am, it's sad and it's unfortunate. And, uh, you know, I wish that I could help every patient that I see, but revision rhinoplasty is one of those places that's humbling for both patient and doctor. At any rate, I hope this sort of synopsis of revision rhinoplasty was helpful. Um, We've had many episodes on rhinoplasty and things of that nature, but I, I, I really want to impart some of the basic principles of redoing one's nose. As always, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. If you enjoy the podcast, you find it educational, informative, etc., go write something nice. Go write a nice review. We love nice reviews. Everyone who puts time into this production would be grateful. And lastly, if there's anyone you care about, you never know when they're gonna to wanna to do an aesthetic surgery. You never know when they're gonna go get a rhinoplasty and you'll wanna have sent our uh, podcast to them before it's too late. So as always, signing off your host, Dr. Roddy Raban. Until next week on Plastic Surgery Uncensored.